In this video, we're going to automate flag and pennant patterns using Python. I'll show how to algorithmically identify these patterns, then backtest their performance. The flag and pennant patterns are very similar. They both describe a brief interruption in a trend before it hopefully continues. A flag has two roughly parallel trend lines, creating a price channel opposite of the prevailing trend. While pennants, a pointed flag, have converging bounding lines with a negative and positive slope. I'm not terribly interested in these distinctions, rather I'm interested in the core idea that all these patterns embody. That is, a brief interruption in a trend as an entry point for a trade. That will be the main focus of this video, and we will see that it is a pretty good entry point. I'd like to note that these patterns are rather subjective. I'll do my best to explain why I implemented the patterns in the way I did, but a technical analysis guru may think some of the patterns my code finds are not legitimate flags or pennants. The code I present should offer a base for modification that you can adjust to your own interpretations of these patterns. Before we start, I need to define some terminology I'll use for the rest of this video. This is a bull flag that the code finds. The area the two blue lines encompass, I will call the flag. The preceding trend, marked with a white line, I will call the pole. The start point of the pole, I will call the base. The end point of the pole, I will call the tip. The length of time that the trend takes, I will call the pole width. The length of time that the flag takes, I will call the flag width. The difference between the pole tip and the pole base, I will call the pole height. And the difference between the tip and the lowest price in the flag, I will call the flag height. The pattern is confirmed once the price breaks out of the range defined by the blue lines in the direction of the preceding trend. I'll call this the confirmation point. This is when a trade entry could take place. With that defined, let's get into the pattern recognition. I actually created two different identification methods. After going over the first version, I'll explain why I felt another was necessary. Anyways, both versions are controlled by a single adjustable parameter I call the order. The order controls the size of the patterns found. Here's a pattern found when the order parameter is 7, and here's a pattern when the order parameter is 48. The first method is based on these idealized drawings. In these drawings, we can see that there is a preceding trend, then the price makes a W or M shape for bull and bear flags, respectively. This implementation looks for those shapes. The shapes have five important points, which I will label here. These will be used to identify the M and W type shapes. To identify the patterns, I'm going to use both the rolling window algorithm and the perceptually important points algorithm. If you are unfamiliar with these two algorithms, I covered them in detail in my previous video, which I have linked in the corner. I recommend watching that before continuing with this one. Anyways, let's look at an example. Here is a bull flag match. The algorithm operates just using the closing price, so let's look at that for a more clear picture. The base of the flagpole is identified using the rolling window algorithm. The tip of the pole is the maximum price found since the base. The five important points in the flag are found using the perceptually important points algorithm, using data from the tip to the current point. Here are the five found perceptually important points in red. The upper bounding line of the flag is the line connecting the first and third point. The lower bounding line of the flag is the line connecting the second and fourth points. The pattern is confirmed when the price breaks out of the bounding lines. If we zoom in a bit, we can see that the current point does break out of the range, confirming this pattern. Let's look at the code. Both versions of the flag pattern recognition make use of this data class. It holds all the information that makes up a flag pattern the x and y coordinate of the base, tip, and confirmation points, a boolean if it's a flag or a pennant, and the flag attributes. The flag pattern recognition is implemented in this function. It takes an array, which should be the closing price, and the order parameter. The order has a minimum value of 3, which we enforce. As the pattern forms, its details are kept in these pending variables. If confirmed, the patterns are assembled in these lists. We loop through each candle in the data. At each bar, we check if there is a confirmed local top or bottom with the rolling window algorithm. If there is, we set the pending pattern's base at the found top or bottom. Bear flags are set at tops, and bull flags are set at bottoms. We use the functions check bear pattern pips and check bull pattern pips to see if the pending pattern is confirmed. They both return true on confirmation. If the pattern is confirmed, we record it into the proper list and set the pending variable to none to avoid adding the same pattern multiple times. Let's go over the check bull pattern pips function. This is where the rules about what qualifies as a pattern are enforced. 
It takes the pending pattern, the closing price array, the current index, and the order parameter. We get the data from the base of the poll up to and including the current price. We find the max price since the bottom, this is our poll tip. We check that there has been at least 5 or half the order parameter candles since the tip. We ensure the flag width is less than 50% of the poll width. Then we ensure the flag height is less than 50% of the height of the poll. These 50% figures could be tweaked to adjust the pattern selected. I chose them to be quite lenient. They should remain less than 100% though. If we've made it this far, we find the 5 perceptually important points from the tip to the current point. The center pip at index 2 needs to be greater than its neighbors to ensure the W shape. We then compute the slope and intercept of the flag lines. We find the index where the two lines intersect. If they are parallel, we set the intersection to a large negative value. We check to ensure the lines don't intersect in the flag area. If the intersection is negative, it is before the pole tip, which means the lines are diverging. If the intersection is negative and too close to the tip, the lines are diverging a lot, so we filter that out. This negative 1.0 could be replaced with a larger negative value to further filter diverging flags. Finally, we compute the value of the upper flag line at the current point. We check to see if the current price has broken out. At this point, the pattern is confirmed. We check the lower flag line slope to decide if it's a pennant or not. We fill out all the details in the pending pattern and return true. I won't walk through the code for checking bear patterns. It is nearly identical, but the rules are symmetrically flipped to align with bear patterns. The full code is available in the description, so you can take a look if you wish. Now that we've gone over the code, let's see how these patterns perform. We'll look at hourly data for Bitcoin Tether from 2018 through the end of 2022. To backtest, we'll find all the patterns in the data across a wide range of the order parameter, then see how the price changes over the next flag width. Meaning, if we find a pattern with a flag width of 10 candles, we will simulate holding a position for 10 candles after the pattern is found. I think this is a natural rule, as a larger flag would warrant a longer held position. I did not include any stops or take profit rules. That isn't to say they wouldn't help, but I just want to get a baseline idea of how the market behaves after the patterns are found. Here are the bull flag results. In the top left, we see the number of bull flags found at each order parameter. In the top right, we see the average log return, which is roughly the percentage change, the amount the price changes over the next flag width after a pattern is detected. In the bottom left, we have the total log return, the sum of returns at each order parameter. And the bottom right is the win rate of simulated trades. We can see at the lower order parameter values, the average return is consistently positive. So smaller flags worked well, while larger flags didn't perform. The win rates on the lower values of the parameter are also quite attractive. Several are above 60%. The win rates should be interpreted along with the number of patterns, as it is easier to achieve a higher win rate with a lower count of patterns. Here are the bear flag results. Everything is the same except the returns are multiplied by negative 1. This is to simulate a short position. We can see that again the lower parameter values are fairly good, but the higher parameter values are decent as well with only a few parameter values losing overall. The pennants, however, did not do as well. This is the bull pennant data. They are found much less frequently than the flags, and their performance is pretty inconsistent, except at the higher values of the order parameter. And finally, here are the bear pennant results, which did not do well at all. In fact, it is so bad, it may be good as a long entry. Overall, it seems the flags worked better than the pennants, at least on hourly Bitcoin data. I was unsatisfied using just this identification algorithm. The perceptually important points loosely enforces the M or W shape in the flag area. I was curious if that even mattered, so I made a second version, which pays less attention to the shape the price makes in the flag. This second version makes use of the trendline algorithm I published recently. I will not go over it again here, but I explain it in detail in the video linked in the corner. I'd watch that before continuing if you haven't seen it already. I also changed the poll identification to connect a rolling window bottom and top instead of using the maximum or minimum price since a single top or bottom. This was to hopefully get the number of patterns found to scale more monotonically with the order parameter. Anyways, let's look at an example. Here is a flag identified using the trendline algorithm. We again only look at the closing price, so let's see just that. We identify the poll base as a rolling window bottom. 
The pole tip is a rolling window top. We fit trend lines using the trend line algorithm with data from the tip to the candle one prior to the current. The current candle is excluded as we use that to check for a breakout of the range. And as we see, there is a breakout on the last point confirming this pattern. Let's look at the code. The second version of flag pattern recognition is implemented in this function. It's very similar to the previous version, except we draw the pole between adjacent local bottoms and tops. Pending bull flags are triggered on a found top, and pending bear flags are triggered on a found bottom. We record the tip coordinates as the found top or bottom will serve as the pole tip. The pending patterns are checked for confirmation with the check bull pattern trend line and check bear pattern trend line functions. Let's look at the bull pattern trend line function. We first ensure that the tip is the maximum price found up to but not including the current price. We calculate the pole and flag dimensions. We verify the flag width is less than half the width of the pole. Then we verify the flag height is less than 75% of the pole height. In the last version I used 50%, I changed it to 75% to be more lenient and thus find more patterns. We use the fit trendline single function from the trendlines video to find the trendlines from the tip to the candle prior to the current, not including the current price. We check that the price has broken out of the upper trend line, confirming the pattern. We set it as a pennant if the lower flag line slope is positive, then fill out the details about the flag and return true. I purposely was more lenient in the construction of the second version to get more patterns and better test the idea of a brief interruption in a trend as a trade entry. Again, using hourly Bitcoin data as our test set, we get these results for the bull flags found. The number of patterns found monotonically scales with the order parameter in this version, which is a nice property. The bull flags in this version work on nearly every parameter value, favoring the larger values. This is in contrast to the results with the previous version. The win rate is above 50% on most values as well. The average pattern return is also quite high on many values. Here is the bear flag performance, and it's even better. Working well on all but few parameter values. When I first saw this, I seriously considered not releasing this video, but uh, here we are. The fact that the pattern works on both the long and short side is a good sign. Symmetry like this is not very common in my experience. The bull pennants with the second version are again inconsistent, nothing compared to the flags. The bear pennants are the same story, inconsistent, not very good. Overall, we found that the idea behind bull and bear flags, that being a brief interruption in a trend, appears to be a decent entry point. Pennants, at least as I implemented them, do not perform well compared to flags. The definition of a flag we built is very loose. Further refinement may be desired to find textbook or legitimate patterns, but I'm quite happy with the results found. Eventually, I would like to do a follow-up video that groups the flags and pennants found together and trains a classifier to decide whether a pattern is to be traded or not. The classifier could be given the flag width, flag height, pole height, pole width, and the slopes of the flag bounding lines as input features. This way we could find what attributes matter and what don't. In my mind, the truly legitimate flag pattern is the one that works, not the one that looks like pictures and books. It would be interesting to find what that is in a data-driven fashion. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Remember to drink some water.